Today's podcast is brought to you by G3 Conference 2018. Right now, if you go and register for the conference and use the code BAR, you get $40 off of your registration. You don't want to miss this conference located in Atlanta, Georgia, from January the 17th through the 20th with great speakers such as Stephen Lawson, Vody Bakum, and many more. Go now and register. Don't forget, use the code BAR for $40 off. Enjoy the bar. Yo, welcome to the bar, come on and pull up a seat And open up your Bible, what a wonderful feast The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets The inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet This where we tell us world views that we hear from world news In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you We're your source for resources To help you on your way as you battle mean forces This is for the people who can see the importance Of sound theology and the scripture that support it And this is for the truth lovers, biblically reforming, preaching in Christ to the nations, yeah. Welcome to the modern reformation, yeah. The bar, biblical and reformed. Welcome everybody to the bar. It's your boy Dwayne in the building, right back in here. Another Tuesday, and your favorite podcast in your ear, coming through your speakers. You know, you love it. It's the bar. We are biblical and reformed. And we're right back in here again, man. So excited. So thankful for all the listeners and everybody that's been uh, sending us messages and and all of that. We really appreciate the love and support. Uh, What you do, you know, you don't know how much that you do, how much it encourages us. So uh, I want you to continue to do that. Tell a family member, tell a friend about the bar. And today, uh, as always, you know, you guys, I spoil y'all because I bring banging guests like every week. So. Uh, this week is uh, like every other week. Another banging guest, uh, Mr. Daryl Harrison. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm great, Dwayne. Man, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Mr. Daryl uh, has kind of been floating around social media lately. Uh, uh, found him through Facebook, uh, which is probably one of my main meetings of finding people. Uh, and and we're going to get into why we have him on. But before we do that, I'm going to give Daryl the floor right here to kind of give a background about himself, whether you want to do personal or professional or ministry, or whatever, just kind of a, a snip, a bio snippet of who I'm talking to today. Okay, man. Yeah, I can do that. I appreciate that, Dwayne. Yeah. Uh, so let me just first of all say thanks again, man, for having me on. I really appreciate this uh, this opportunity kind of, you know, floating around social media. That wasn't by design. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> social, social media kind of found me on this one. But uh, yeah, so I'm in Atlanta, you know, based in Atlanta. I'm actually a native Atlanta, but uh, have pretty much traveled all over the country through the military and uh, with my corporate experience, man. And uh, definitely identify as a Reformed Baptist. Uh, I uh, haven't been reformed very long, probably about three years or so. Uh, so I like to say reformed theology kind of found me. Uh, you know, we yes, know that uh, it was predestined. Reformed theology, yeah, that, yeah exactly, that's exactly where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, reformed theology, how big the sovereignty of God is. So now that I'm understanding more about that, I can see where, you know, kind of God had me on this path all along. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so, I, so uh, just a little bit about me. Um, you know, I like to write, uh, the blog I started, uh, did about six years ago, kind of started under duress. Uh, some friends of mine mm-hmm. came to me and said, Hey, Daryl, you know, you really need to start writing some stuff. They had been reading a lot of my Facebook posts and stuff like that. You should start a mm-hmm. blog. And I kept telling them, no, no, no. Then they kept bugging me for about six months. And then I finally kind of caved and did that. But, uh, so I write on my blog, um, I write about, uh Sociocultural, theological issues with uh, political issues within a theological framework. Um, you know, I, I attend a local Reformed Baptist church here in the, an Atlanta suburb. Um, I teach an expository Sunday school class there. Uh, um, uh, you know, so uh, I did my undergrad at Liberty. Uh, I, I was a psych major with a uh, concentration in Christian counseling. And uh, also uh, am a fellow at the uh, Black Le- Black Theology and Leadership Institute at Princeton uh, Theological Seminary. So um, got that as part of my background, too. So uh, anything else you guys want to know, uh, feel free to ask. But uh, I'm not really that comfortable talking about myself. So I just kind of, if I sound like I'm rambling, <laughs> it's because I'm, I got I'm you. not really comfortable talking about myself like that. But So that's a little bit about me, man. 
I got you. That's dope, man. That's dope. I didn't know some of those things. What's the name of the church that you go to in Atlanta? Yeah, I attend uh, Rockdale Community Church. Uh, it's located in okay. Conyers. Conyers is about 45 miles east of the heart of downtown Atlanta, but uh, I grew up right. on the west side. I grew up in the, in, the, in the heart of the west side of Atlanta over there where Morehouse College spell and all those great HBCUs are gotcha. located. But yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool, man. That's really cool. Uh, I didn't know that about the uh, the Liberty thing. That's also dope. So um, <clears throat> I guess kind of to jump right in, the first uh, blog that that uh, that caught my attention and many people reposted it. Uh, and I want to I want to set my I guess my listeners at ease um, when I when I uh, talk to Daryl, you know, uh, and, and honestly, Daryl, I was going to bring you on either way. But uh, Daryl is not. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not even going to say it, Daryl, because I, I was about to say you're not in this category. I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to let them feel that out. So anyway, the first uh, blog that 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 I, I, I caught and read was uh, I think it's called uh, Stay Woke, How Woke Theology Has Weakened the Black Church, which catches my attention because that on social media. The whole woke idea is like everywhere. Like, oh my God, I, I get so tired of these. Uh, I call them Facebook theologians and uh, mm-hmm. YouTube scholars. You know, mm-hmm. uh, bringing all mm-hmm. this other nonsense. Um, mm-hmm. Just if you don't mind, like, kind of, I'm, I'm gonna give you a break from talking about yourself. Just kind of give like a, the general synopsis of that that blog and then we'll kind of chop up some of the the little details yeah okay Dwayne. yeah be glad to man uh yeah so as you said the the article uh is titled how woke theology is weak in the black church so that term uh came about um it's sort of a a co-mingling of uh two ideas right so uh, I'm not going to assume your all your listeners are familiar with how that term woke is used, but that's the, the word woke is kind of used in a slang sort of context mm-hmm. uh, as far as being aware, culturally aware, culturally alert, and culturally right. conscious to the current social milieu that you kind of alluded to uh, in America, particularly as it relates to so- socioeconomic issues that are impacting Black Americans. So that that term is being sort of stacked up on top of. Like you said, you know, people with their sort of social media, social media theology, theology, and their worldview mm-hmm. uh, as it relates to Christianity and Christ. So I kind of merged the two words together and sort of coined that phrase to describe a mindset that I'm witnessing anyway. Okay, so I'm only speaking for myself right. in this. Right. Uh, a, a mindset that I'm witnessing being displayed by many professing Christians who, under the banner of social justice, right, as a gospel mandate are starting to commingle orthodox biblical precepts with the principles of cultural Marxism. So really, if you mm-hmm. if you dig deep under the surface in this, you'll see a lot of these tenets that are being uh, propagated as justice issues are actually rooted in cultural Marxism. You see this with groups as, such as Black Lives Matter, and then those right. who sort of uh, subscribe to the Black Liberation Theology of people like James Cone. So I just want to mm-hmm. give some folks some background first about, you know, what's this term woke theology yeah, yeah, all yeah. about? So that's kind of where that came mm-hmm. from. Uh, the idea for the article, uh, if, if folks haven't read it yet, I opened the piece with a quote from uh, the doctor, D. Martin Lloyd-Jones, uh, just a beast mm-hmm. of a theologian. Uh, and uh, okay. so Jones says the business of Christianity is not simply to make us feel happier or even to make us live a better life. It is to reconcile us to God. So the reason I open the article with that with that quote is because woke theology focuses on, if I could just simplify it this way, it's, it's, it's as if their mandate, their agenda, is to create a sort of heaven on earth. Uh, yes. Where you you got you know you're stressing this whole racial reconciliation thing as sort of a sociological pursuit, but what I find missing is the doctrine of homartiology, the doctrine of sin. And you cannot separate the two. You cannot talk about racial reconciliation without first addressing why we are irreconciled to one another to begin with. So the article emphasizes that people are, are sort of stressing the woke aspect at the expense of the doctrinal aspect. And you cannot have the mm-hmm. one without the other. So when I when I when I assert that this is weakening the church, the black church especially, 
what I mean by that is that the church, and by the church I mean Christians who attend these churches, are not equipped theologically to even define what the gospel is, offer an apologetic for what the what the for why the gospel is true, just basic elements of being a Christian that every Christian should be equipped to do. This whole wokeness is sort of smothering that as uh, a missiology right. of the church today. So that's kind of some background of what the article is trying to point to. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's really good. Uh, everything that you said, I, I, I agree to 100 um, percent. And and it actually it what I've seen, what have I what I've seen, it, it has changed the focus from, you know, biblical theology to, you know, the social side for those that, you know, prior to, you know, uh, didn't study the Bible anyway. You know what I mean? Like, right, like yeah. they were already yeah. falling short, you know? Yeah, it's interesting you say that, because that's actually a segue into uh, the other piece you're going to bring up that I recently wrote. Matter of fact, I just posted it this week. And this piece mm-hmm. is entitled, Is the Gospel No Longer Enough for Black Christians? Right. And man, the thesis of that piece is exactly what you just talked about. So the uh, the weakness of the church as a fruit of this whole woke theology uh on on the one hand is 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 bringing us back to listen I'm trying to bring us back to the basics here uh so we're hearing a lot about uh you know blacks in the contemporary America being you know oppressed and mm-hmm. we're being oppressed we're, we're you know we're 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 tantamount to slaves in the 21st century you know and I and I you know, at the risk of coming off uh, of facetious, you know that's ridiculous to to really use right. those those sort of terms today because it really does an injustice to you know our ancestors and whatnot who really did suffer mm-hmm. and who really were oppressed. But uh, in this right. piece, you know, I argue that a fruit of woke theology is that the gospel is no longer enough. And, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is that it's, it, to your point, you know, early on in, in Black ecclesiology. We preached Acts four twelve, man. It's like, hey, listen, Jesus right. is the way to salvation. You must try and forgiveness of your sins. If you do not, there is a hell that you're going to spend eternity in. But see, you don't it, you don't hear that message anymore. So mm-hmm. in that piece, you know about you know is the gospel no longer enough? I, I you know I ask the question, where has that message gone? We have right. so focused our our gospel, quote unquote on a cultural, a socio-ethno-cultural redemption in this life, as if racial reconciliation is now the ultimate evidence of of our salvation. It's not spiritual anymore. Mm -hmm. The salvation that that the Church once sought is not spiritual anymore. It's temporal. It's it's what I call kumbaya theology, where we all need to just, you know, make ourselves get along. Like Rodney King said <laughs> back, back in the day, so the spiritual yes, aspect of salvation is totally if it's not been totally set aside, it's in the process of being gradually reduced to a secondary matter uh you bring up right uh you bring up social du- social justice to the average uh black Christian today, and they would more than likely say that that is the mission of the church today. So we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're in the business right now, the way of making, you know, in, in total, totally antithetical to Matthew 28. We're not to go out and make disciples anymore, man. We, we're supposed to go out here and be making social justice warriors to fight this right. racial reconciliation battle. And that's what we ought to be about. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, 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 while we're doing that, we're becoming totally ignorant of the fact that, People are dying and going to hell, and that was the message that the early black church preached. You, if you right. don't believe in Christ, you will die and go to hell. And we don't even hear that message anymore. No, not at all, not at all. And hell is definitely much worse than a oppression, a slavery, exactly a, right. anything like that. You know, exactly, um, you know. I think so, about yeah, a text like Mark. Uh, I think about a text like Mark eight thirty six. You know, what would a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You know, yes. so you're, you're, you know, what, what, what will it profit you if indeed, okay, you bring all the, you take all these Confederate flags down, you get all these civil right. war monuments melted down and destroyed. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, what, what does that profit you if the people who 
still subscribe to that mindset. Now, here's the thing about that, man. And I hope I'm not getting ahead of your uh, uh, schedule oh, a little bit, but bro, we I, I mean, flow around here. Keep going. Cool. You you know you look at what's going on today, and uh, you know I posted on my Facebook page today that I find it really interesting that you know people are demanding that all these uh, statues be removed on the basis of people's past sins. But if mm -hmm. our own sins were wow. statues, if our own sins were statues, Ooh. bruh. <laughs> I, oh, mean, I don't want to see mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, there wouldn't be enough places to take the statues to get rid of them. <clears throat> you see? Oh, my goodness. So now, you know, wow. that's not to say, you know, I, you know, the point I'm trying to drive home is that we got to start seeing the big picture here. Yes. Look at the ministry of Jesus. G mm -hmm. There was a milieu in Jesus' day, too. There was a very so sort of sociocultural, political milieu that existed in Jesus' day. But Jesus didn't right. touch any of that. Jesus didn't come to deal mm -hmm. with that. You deal with mm -hmm. that as Jesus did by preaching the gospel and as the Holy Spirit imparts the gospel and, and, and allows the Word of God to penetrate the human heart. That's how society changes. It doesn't change the other way around yes. it. And people That's moving true. these That's statues so and saying get rid of these flags and blah blah blah. They're doing they're trying to do it wrong, man. They're doing it totally opposite of how Jesus himself approached uh the culture. Right. So totally, totally agree. Totally agree. And you know, it's funny <clears throat> because, you know, even Paul in Paul's day, you know, it was the same thing. You know, the Jews were in Rome, they were being segregated, they were being, you know, profiled you know if they were christian right. mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so all yeah. of that was going on and and and, and you know he still the, the gospel was still the strongest message you know so i guess let me uh let me see where we can go um you know we we, we mentioned about the gospel and see there are some some people uh i'll say that say you know the gospel yeah the, the gospel and what or you know, just the gospel and, or, you know, or is it the gospel? And what, how do you approach someone that comes to you with, okay, bro. Yeah. The gospel, I get it. But you know, what about this? What, what, what is your kind of response to that? I kind of think I know, well, but I just want to, want to hear you talk. Yeah. About. My response was, my response to that would be to, to remind them, listen, number one, we, we, we live in a sinful world. Uh, you right. know, if somebody comes to me one on one with that. I would just go ahead and remind them that listen, this this is two sinners talking to each other. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with, with all our good intent, uh, good quote unquote intent, we're still two sinners talking to one another. Uh, and as long as you and I remain alive in this world, this sort of nirvana that you kind of envision that you know we should be on the battlefield fighting for, it's never going to come to fruition. And the reason right. it isn't is because of sin. Uh, you yes. know, uh, so number one, I would remind them of that reality that not everybody is going to believe the gospel. Not everybody's mm -hmm. going to believe it. See, we, I think we've forgotten again, just going back to my, to my blog mm -hmm. post on, you know, is the gospel yeah. enough? We've Please forgotten do. some of those elemental, elemental tenets of the faith that we learned when we were kids, that Jesus right. himself said that the way is going to be narrow. And mm -hmm. Jesus meant what he said. The way was narrow then, it's narrow now. So someone's coming right. to me with that question, okay, so what What else do we do? Well, we need to remember, we're not in the business of trying to widen a road that Jesus said is going to be narrow. Not mm -hmm. everybody is going to believe the gospel. Not everybody is going to appropriate the gospel to themselves. Not everybody is going to acknowledge the gospel as the truth. Not everybody is going to be convicted towards uh, confession and repentance, and faith, and renunciation of a sinful mindset or a sinful worldview that they may have previously had. Not everybody's going to do that. And when that doesn't happen, and it's like I asked that question in the blog mm -hmm. post on, is the gospel enough? You know, when a person doesn't believe the gospel, then what do you do? When a person says to you, no, like the, like the, uh, like the rich uh, young ruler, you hear the gospel and you just turn and walk away. What are you going right. to do then? What are you going to do when you don't change the mind of that alt-right mm -hmm. white nationalist out there who you know hates you? How you? Is your gospel enough to where you can accept that that person just is hard-hearted and they're not, they're not mm -hmm. going to want to hear a word you have to say? And what they think about you, the hateful attitude that they have towards you, is going to, they're going to continue to harbor that. What, what do you do then? Mm -hmm. 
Are you going to go? Uh, right. You know, are you going to go uh, advocate? Oh, well, let, let's burn his house down. Or let's <laughs> let's take this right. statue of Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee is not affecting my life in any way whatsoever. Yeah, I want to go take his statue down. You know, so my right. point is this. Okay, so you take all the statues down. All the statues are gone. All the Confederate flags are gone. They're gone. Your whole landscape is clear now of these uh, images and vestiges. All right? But let's say you haven't changed one mind. Not one wow. mind. One heart has been changed as That's a result right, of that. What what have you accomplished? That's You've right. accomplished absolutely nothing. Why do you think yes, Jesus hung out with tax collectors who were stealing from the citizens. Why do you think he, uh, uh, you know, hung out with adulterers and crooked politicians and things like that? Mm-hmm. It, was to, it, it was to impact the heart. He didn't just come to, right. to, for, for superficial, aesthetical changes. He came to change the way people think. So you can take all of these images down. They can just be done away with as if it never happened. It's like that service mm-hmm. master cleanup commercial. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll fix it like it never happened. Right. Okay, but but if you do all that and you don't change one heart, I mean, if I'm flying a Confederate flag outside my house right now, I can take the flag down. Yep. But once I Nothing once I changed. go out and take that flag down, I'm still a white supremacist when I walk back in my house. Yeah. So what have you yep. accomplished? That's right. Nothing. That's right. Absolutely man. nothing. So is your, is your gospel deep enough to handle that? That's the question I ask in the blog. Yeah, that's so true, man. That is so true. And that's kind of some of the things that, you know, I was saying and my team was saying in South Carolina, you know, when, when um, they brought down the uh, the flag from uh, Columbia, you know, it was a big deal. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and actually it's funny because when that flag went down, like a hundred flags went on the back of cars, you know, it was almost like, you know, you're trying to kill a snake, but, you know, you, you cut off the head, but, you know, it sprouted off a hundred heads. Um, and even there were instances where people were snatching them off of cars. But at the end of the day, like you said, you know, that don't really matter. You know, it's it's right. all about the heart, man. And that that's so good. It, you know, it's refreshing to hear somebody else uh, talk like we talk here at the bar because <laughs> sometimes we feel like we're alone. And I know you probably get oh, that yeah, sometimes. Oh, yeah, I know how that feels. Well. Yeah, I was about to say, I know exactly yeah. how you feel, bro. Yeah, yeah. So you, exactly you have some friends here at the bar, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like you're out on this island, man. It's like you're out on this island yeah. somewhere. You're just wondering, man. You know, it's like that, like Tom Hanks in that yeah. movie Castaway, man. You're just out here on this island yeah. somewhere. You're just looking for some sign of life. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere, man. Yeah, yeah. looking for Wilson. Wilson. Where, is anybody <laughs> listening? Exactly right. Like, Wilson, you know, is anybody yeah. listening, yeah. you know? And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah man, so I, I think, uh, I, I think what hurts me, man, about this whole, uh, 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 and it's kind of interesting, man, you know, we have a, 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 uh, a mindset out there where, uh, certain black people get angry at other ethnicities appropriating aspects of their culture. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, well, white, white, like for instance, white people, white women can't wear braids or, or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but then again, you, you turn around and their criticism of that sort of cultural appropriation is idolatry in itself, you know, and, exactly. uh, you know, one of my, one of my go-to texts, man, when it comes to all this, uh, ethnic back and forth is going on. Number one, I don't like to use the word racism. Uh, right. I don't believe in that. I don't subscribe to such a thing as race. Uh, you look at a text yep. like Acts right. seventeen twenty six. It says, and he, that is God, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live mm-hmm. on all the face of the earth. You know, in the Greek, that word, mankind is the word ethnos. God created ethnicities. Yep. He didn't create races. So I prefer to use the term ethnicism as opposed to racism, mm-hmm. because to me it's a more biblically accurate term. But right. when you look at all this ethnic back and forth that's going on and the glorification of cultural tribalism, uh, especially right. within the black church today, uh, that's mm-hmm. sad, sinful, and shameful. Uh, because, mm-hmm. uh, listen, when you stand before God, he's not going to judge you on what shade of melanin, melanin you have. He's not going to judge you on the basis of that. Right. And then what makes it even more ridiculous is that, you know, a lot of us are going about bragging and boasting about being black, being brown. Well, we didn't have a darn thing to do with that. 
We had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a Potter Clay thing, right? It's a Potter Clay right, thing. Right, right. If, if, you, if you the Potter and had something to do with it, yeah, you got something to boast about. You got yeah, something to boast about. Yeah, But we, didn't, we I, had I nothing thought about to that do one, with man. that, bro. We had nothing thought about to that one. do with that. Yeah, yeah, we go out here, oh, yeah. I'm proud to be, I'm proud to be black, I'm proud to be, you know, whatever. Uh, no, my melanin uh, popping, no. my melanin is popping. Right, yeah, your, 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 your melanin, your, you bang, your melanin is out there, man. It's out there in full display, you know. But I like the, uh, I like this text, man. I have this text written on my whiteboard in my office at work. Paul's talking mm-hmm. in Galatians 6.14. He says, but may it never be that, that I would boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. through which the oh, yes. world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Mm-hmm. See, that, that's the mindset that so I good. see missing in all this sort of uh, social, social, social justice uh, ranting and raving that's going on out here. Let me, let me right. just let everybody, right. I'm, I'm going to give everybody, uh, this is a spoiler alert, all right? <laughs> I'm going to just let everybody know right now. You're... you're Racial reconciliation will never happen in this world. Right. It will never mm-hmm. come to full consummation. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Number one, mm-hmm. even the term is misguided. The term racial reconciliation is misguided because racial forces you to identify the person in terms of their skin color, not the heart. It, it takes you from the outside in. The gospel takes you from the inside out. So when you use a term like racial reconciliation, I I must first, the impetus for my approaching you must first be on the basis of what skin tone you have. You're right. So you got a bunch of churches out here today. Yeah. Let's, let's merge our white church with our black church. I mean, Mm -hmm. really, really? What's that going to prove? That that, that may look good on a billboard when you take a photo of it and say, Hey, we're a diverse (laughs) church. That may that may good be a good marketing tool, marketing ploy for your church mm-hmm. to get more members to come. But what what condition is the heart in of those people who are sitting in those pews right. or in those chairs? Mm-hmm. You see, wow. Just because you and That's I, so let's say you white, Dwayne, I'm black. Let's say you and I sitting next together in church. That doesn't mean we are unity or harmony at all, bro. That just exactly. means that we showed exactly. up to church that day. You know, we blended our congregations yep. together. Yep. Uh, you know, it's just yep. an, an external, superficial visual that yeah. means absolutely nothing. Absolutely yes, you're nothing. preaching. You're preaching. This ain't Sunday school, you man. Know. Chill. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You can tell, I'm just I'm, what I'm passionate about is yes, the fundamental, uh, uh, the fundamental tenet of the gospel. If, if nothing else is true about the gospel, you know. This is true, and I'm reminded of the first words that Jesus ever spoke in the first sermon he ever gave in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. He said, repent and believe the gospel. That was the first sermon Jesus ever gave. He -hmm. didn't say, reconcile with your brother. The, Mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. The reconciliation that we're called to in the gospel is to be reconciled to God. Paul said, I beg you, be reconciled to God. I implore you, be reconciled to God. The image there is that he's on his knees grabbing you by your ankles and pleading with you to be reconciled to God. Once that mm-hmm. happens, all other types of reconciliation take care of themselves. It's the same in a family. It's the same in a marriage. It's the same between siblings. I see. All, it's it's, it's kind of weird, right? The way all other kind of reconciliation, we appeal to the heart. Oh, That's you need true. to make That's up. True. You need to go. You need to go confess. You That's need to go true. apologize. Wow, you did wrong. You know you were wrong. You mm. you you sinned. You know you know you fell short in that regard. You shouldn't have said that. See, all other kind of reconcil- reconciliation, we plead. Uh, we we plead to the to the heart of the person. But when right. it comes to racial right. reconciliation, it's not like that. It's not like that. Right. Racial reconciliation yeah. is all superficial. It's all external. Wow. Now nah, we need we need we need to hold hands. We need to, we need to, we need this kumbaya moment here. Uh, not appealing at all to the sin that is at the root of the irreconciliation that needs to be made right. Yes, and, you know yes. it's, it's, it's kind of interesting how we kind of se- uh, segregate those two 
Any other kind of yeah. rec- reconciliation? Oh, yeah, we're going we gonna to go, oh, well, you know, the Bible says we need to forgive and we need to love one another. Right. You know, the Bible says, you know, go confess your sins to one another. But when it comes to rec- racial reconciliation, only text we want to point to is where Jesus turns over the, the, the tables uh, in, in, the, uh, in the temple. <laughs> That's so true, man. Well, Jesus, wow. I had, a dude come, I had a dude come to me say, well, man, Jesus was out in them streets. Jesus turned over them tables. Oh my goodness! Jesus was out in them streets. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he's out in the streets, man. You know, so we need to be. Oh man, we need, bro. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't don't know. I don't know if you've ever been to Atlanta or if you've ever driven in Atlanta traffic. But bro, Atlanta traffic is no joke. So, you know, several months ago now, you know, when, when BLM was all over the city, they were having their little, uh, you know, impromptu mm-hmm. uh, protests out of interstates, uh, not just services. Mm-hmm. They, they are in the interstates here in Atlanta. Yep. And one thing you don't do in Atlanta, man, is you don't, you don't mess up traffic. You don't mess no, it up. It's bro. bad we enough already. Six, it's bad enough. We got almost 6 million people in this city, man. You, and we yep. love our cars. You don't yep. mess up traffic. Okay. So yep. no, so that's not, that's not the way you change hearts. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not being facetious, but that's just not the way you do it. You don't yeah. change minds yeah. that no, way. No, that's real. That's real, you man. You don't change that's minds so that true. way. Yep. And I so love true. how, uh, you know, going back to the earlier point I made, I think what people, what Christians need to come to understand is that not everybody's going to believe the gospel. When Jesus was engaging with the young ruler, I love right. how once the young ruler made his mind up, that he was not going to believe that his heart was bent towards his wealth. The text says that he walked away extremely sad because he was a very yep. wealthy man. Jesus mm-hmm. let him walk. Yep. He didn't go, yep. wait, 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 wait. You don't know. You don't realize what you're doing. You don't, you don't understand. Wait, that's wait, so wait, true. Wait. No. Wow. Jesus let, let him walk. walk. And that's what we need mm-hmm. to be able to do. We need to be able to let yeah. people walk and be able to accept the fact that again, we're not going to create heaven on earth here. It's not happening. Right. It's that's not, true. That's the nature you know, of sin. I, yeah, go ahead, man. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm cut in right here. I think that that actually uh, it, it partners with uh, some bad theology, man. You know, the whole uh, kingdom, uh, kingdom, dominion on earth type thing. Yep. I think that mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a foundation there that has... Uh, Part partnered with or coupled with that that ideology of you know making it uh, a utopia on earth you know right. and not understanding you know you know in text that you know we're gonna we're gonna suffer we're gonna go through stuff you know it's not right. all about health and wealth and prosperity yeah you know and I think yeah. that like I said bad theology has kind of fueled that uh, to the point where you know it's leaking over into these people trying to establish that kind of uh, like I said uh, heaven on earth or utopia here. Right. And, and mm-hmm. that's why they're making the moves that they're making, man. So real, real quick, man, uh, we, we burnt through my 30 minutes, man, because this is good. I love it. <laughs> but I have to take a, a quick break right here. Uh, we have a new sponsor, uh, G3 Conference in Atlanta. It's going to be awesome. Make sure you guys come check it out. It's going to be uh, Dr. Uh, James White, Vody Bacham, uh, Paul Tripp, a whole bunch of awesome guys going to be there. Uh, and we're going to play that commercial right here. I just want to ask in our present day, we talk about the Reformation not being over. The Reformation is not over. When we see in the evangelical church the the types of things that we're seeing where puppets have replaced preachers, the Reformation is not over. Join us this January as we spend an entire weekend focused on the practical components of discipleship. It's a conference for the local church. Reserve your seat and book your hotel by visiting g3conference.com. All right, we're back here with my man, Daryl, uh, my new best friend, uh, my new Mr. Wilson. <laughs> if you're stuck on the island, uh, uh, definitely, definitely enjoy talking to him and, and having him on the bar. And, and we had a really good conversation uh, about just what's going on currently. Uh, you guys know that I'm usually like uh, ahead of time kind of guy. Uh, but we're literally, you you would be surprised that we're actually recording this on uh, uh, a Thursday. Uh, what's the date? Thursday the 17th. And you're going to actually hear this on Tuesday. I know I'm always referring to, you know, this show will be posted later. But just because of the, cli- uh, the climate 
of, of what's going on. I felt that this show uh, was probably right on time. Um, and and, and Daryl has uh, has done some some great work blog wise. And then even here, man, I, I love your 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 thought process and the way that you, you know, you you articulated, you know, how all of this stuff kind of ties together and, and and always base it out of scripture, man. So I really want to first thank you for uh, for being a guest and bringing just such uh, awesome content, man, just like, you know, in your blogs. And I, I, I'll be honest, not all writers can interview well. I, I've experienced that. So uh, you you actually did a good job, man. So just just give yourself a pat on hey, the thanks, back. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it man. That's, 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 yes, that's very so, humbling, man. I appreciate ahead. that. I, I, yeah, actually, my my uh, my natural inc- inclination is to write. Uh, so that, oh, that's that's kind of where my gift is. I yep. kind of get a little nervous when I'm talking, but uh, I appreciate yep. that, man. Uh, that's very humbling, yeah. very kind. Man. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, yeah, you did good. You did good. I and I know that most writers they that's that's their that's their comfort zone. Uh, and me, I am not a writer. I'm a talker. Uh, but somebody yeah. recently mm-hmm. asked me to write. Um, so I probably be calling on you, Daryl. I need some, some help, man. Um, uh, working, <laughs> working on a blog. So, you know, what's uh, cool though? Here's my, my one piece of advice, man, is, uh, is just write the way you talk. Most people write the way they talk and man, just gotcha. write, just, gotcha. just, just write it as if it was a conversation, man. And, uh, and right. that's the best thing to do. Just be natural, gotcha. man. Just write okay, it man. as if you were talking it out. <clears throat> Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, sir. Well, as we get ready to exit, uh, I want to ask you our bar signature questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we have two questions that we ask all of our guests. Uh, kind of a, I call them, you know, they're like late icebreakers kind of thing where they uh, they tap into another side of the guests. Uh, don't get okay. nervous. But uh, my first right. <laughs> bar question is, being that you're in Atlanta, so I think I might even, you know, I, I'm going to be funny here, but um, <laughs> what think kind of music funny. do you listen to? Yeah, what kind of music do you listen to in your car when nobody's around? And it don't have to be gospel, whatever. We, we we ain't all about that here. You know, it could be whatever it is. What are you listening to in the car? Music. You know wise? you know what, man? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to let you know a little secret about me. I'm really weird in this in this respect. I like to listen to really sad love songs. Oh wow! <laughs> even when I'm, yeah, even even when I'm on the when I'm on the treadmill working out, I yeah. like to listen to really sad love songs, man, because I love the stories that they tell. I love oh, the stories true. those that's songs true. tell. They they speak so much to human nature, man. So I like to listen to wow. really sad love songs, man. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Okay, that's that's different. That's different. I yeah. like it though. You yeah, know, yeah. I told I think, you, I, I told you, I was weird, man. I told you, I was weird. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, I can dig <laughs> it, man. I'm all about something different. I'm all about something different, man. Uh, I think even Russell Westbrook, uh, before he pregames to like R and B, and everybody thinking that's weird. So, good deal. All right, man. My next signature bar question is: What podcasts or sermons do you listen to, if any? Oh man, uh, man! I probably have Ligonier Ministries running twenty four seven. You know, I'm always listening to somebody from out of that Sproul RC Sproul camp. Um, right. You know, uh, I love those the, the teaching fellows, man. Especially uh, W. Robert Godfrey, man. He's he's, he's, he's oh, probably man, the, yeah. the, the the church history guru, man. So um, I listen to Ligonier a lot. I listen to uh, their RefNet app. Uh, oh yeah, yep. A lot, you know, um, you know. So, uh, you know, MacArthur, all those guys. Uh, yep. My favorite sermon topic, though, I like to I like to listen to sermons that deal with sin a lot. Hmm. Um. Uh, you know, just because I know me, yes. <laughs> so I got to right. keep that right. I got to right. keep that message pounded in my own mind that's, as much as I possibly so can. But I probably go to Ligonier, man, more than any other. Mm-hmm. Uh, podcast or website for most of my theological content gotcha okay yeah that that sounds like me man um same same here same list um but i will tell you this you you probably want to add just a little bit of the bar podcast in there somewhere throughout your day uh we'll, every we'll, tuesday we'll do you know. that we'll do that going <laughs> forward man we'll do that going forward i guarantee you that bro <laughs> yes sir yes sir yeah we we and, it, and it's awesome man god has been gracious man i told you on the phone man we we've had some awesome guests from Stephen lawson and uh mark dever hb charles um we're still trying to yeah, get yeah. um uh mr godfrey we we sent him an email he, he's actually in germany right now 
So yeah, I'll wait uh, for him to come back to really hassle him. So when I get him on, I make sure I let you know, you know, he's up. Yeah, here. please do, man. <laughs> Tell him I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of his, man. Huge fan. Yes, sir. Good deal. All right, Daryl. Um, right here, man. I'm going to give you space to, uh, you know, I guess kind of close, you know, as the old black church say, close us out. And, uh, you know, whatever inspirational or anything you want to say to my my listeners, any like, you know, uh, words of encouragement, anything that you want to say, I'm going to give you the space right here and then we'll, we'll cut out of here. I appreciate it, Dwayne. Yeah, I, I think. The, I'll just go out on this note. You know, the gospel really challenges us to make some hard decisions, some really hard decisions, especially when we think we've been offended or unjustly treated. Um, I was thinking earlier today, uh, my favorite gospel account of the crucifixion is actually in Mark, the gospel of Mark. And I would just encourage folks mm. to go back and read and really meditate on the abuse Jesus took, not just on the cross, but on his way there. Okay, we, right. we, we, got, we got the imagery. We can appreciate Jesus dying on the cross, his blood being shed, uh, he being uh, you know, pierced in his side. We can appreciate what happened at Golgotha, but on his way there, he was mm-hmm. beat, spit on, slapped, cursed, you name it. And if we profess right. the name of Christ, we need to be prepared to respond just like Jesus did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which means so true. not having any right to claim our rights. If anybody mm-hmm. had that right, it was him. Jesus said, listen, if my kingdom oh, yeah. world, this world, my father would send 12 legions of angels down here to fight. But the kingdom of Christ is not of this world, man. We got to remember that, bro. We have yes, got sir. to remember that, and we need to be willing to take the blows for the cause of mm. the gospel and for the witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll just leave it with that. Hey, man, that's good, man. That's good. Uh, man, you know, it's funny that you brought that up because uh, my good friend Seiko Woods was talking about the same thing, and he talked about how Paul, uh, no, how Peter uh, acted like some of these activists and cut off an ear of one of the soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, when he came yeah. to get Jesus, and he said, yeah. "Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh, put the ear back in uh-huh. place." That's not like that's not wow, how it works, man. That that's not how the wow, kingdom of Christ good. is going to come to fruition, man. That's not how it works. You got a wow. bunch of people out here; they want to do just like Peter, and uh, yep. they want to cut off people's ears. That that's that's wow. what all the statue moving is. All the statue moving it's is the exact ears. same thing. It's cutting off ear, yep. but you're not changing anybody's mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. Nobody's heart. Mm-hmm. If, if anything, the hearts are becoming even more hardened now. Mm, that's true. That's true. Wow. That's so good. Jesus tried to get Darryl. across to Peter. So yeah. 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 Brother. I appreciate you so much. Uh, we'll probably have you on again. You, you know, I, I probably can, uh, expect, you know, some more great material, man. And I'm saying, Hey, Daryl, let's, let's hook up, man. Let's, let's talk about let's it. On do the it show. Man. Let's um, do it, man. Let's uh, do make it. Make sure you guys check out, uh, his website is his blog website. It'll definitely be in the show notes. Um, it's called just, think no just thinking dot me right me right yeah uh, one word just thinking dot me yeah so we'll we'll definitely have the link in the show notes so that you can go and um uh, and check out the material and support and share and get it out there man and uh man again again appreciate you sir uh i'm in greenville so we someday we gotta meet up man and, and yeah and i'm gonna be coming hand. up there uh yeah i'm gonna be coming up there before the end of the year man i'll definitely look you up i'll let you know good deal good deal man god bless brother all right y'all appreciate y'all tuning into the bar make sure check us out every tuesday right here fresh bar podcast every week go to the website thebarpodcast.com uh like us on facebook share our material on facebook like us on twitter follow us on twitter the bar underscore podcast we out of here y'all god bless